I will revive this my dear front load washing machine using this universal control board XM800 XQG because its original circuit board has been burned and is not repairable. That is why I will install this universal motherboard in it and try to fix it. I can install the universal board using the old wiring and the washing machine. But I am not going to do it. I will remove all the old wiring because if the customer gets the original new control board, then I will install that control board using its original wiring. The owner of this washing machine wants to avail this opportunity if he finds the original control board then it could be installed in his washing machine, but until he does not get it, he will run his washing machine with this universal control board. I will pull the drum upward which will make it easier to remove the spring. The spring has been removed from its place. The complete drum has gone down. I will remove the bunch of wires. I will reuse this electric filter. I will check its connections. The blue colored wire is neutral. Brown is the main line wire. The blue at the back is the output wire. The red and brown wires at the back are the output from here. I push this cover upward which is attached at the bottom of the washing machine because the hooks are made here. These hooks have been grooved from the back side. These hooks were fitted in these holes. Let me put the cover back and demonstrate you one more time. I have pulled the cover from the top. And then pushed the cover upward. It has easily come out. If I would have applied force on it. These hooks would have been broken. But the cover would have not come out. I will start the wiring of the washing machine. I have cut the wires according to the sizes where they are going to be attached. I have connected the thimbles with the wires. On some wires, I have attached thimbles on one end of the wires, because I have to measure the size of these wires where they are going to be attached. I will demonstrate to you the universal control board wiring connections on this table. I will need the motor for it. Next, I will need a heater element. Also, the sensor is attached to the heater. If you want to test only, then you can use a sensor between 5 to 10 kilo ohms for testing the control board. But the actual sensor is attached to the heater. So I will use it. Then I need a water flow switch, which I have taken from inside the control board box. Next, I will need a door switch. This is the drain water pump, which is also needed. At last, I will need the control board to do it. These are the items that are installed in the washing machine and are electrically connected to each other. These components make a washing machine functional. Let's start the wiring connections. 
I will connect the line and the neutral wires to this filter on its output, which will be attached to the control board. The right terminal on the filter is for the line wire. I am connecting the black wire with the left terminal. I will attach these same wires to the control board now. AC line is written on the terminal of the circuit board. AC neutral is written on the top terminal. Brown is the line and black is neutral. I will install both these wires at their terminals in the circuit board. I will make the next connections with the motor. The rotor is written on the control board. Two connections will be made with the rotor of the motor. Two connections with the stator. I have already made four wires for the motor. Always remember the wire colors you install in the control board to make the connections with the motor. Because if the connections go wrong, the control board or the motor will burn. To avoid mistakes in the connections of the motor, I have made pairs of black and blue wires. To make the connections further easier without any mistakes, I have written the names of the paired wires I made. These two wires are of the rotor. This will avoid mistakes in the connections of the motor. I will install the rotor wires in the control board. In the same way, I will install the stator wires in the terminals of the control board. You can install the wires of the stator in any terminal of the stator, there is no polarity difference in it. The same is for the rotor pair as well. But if you install the stator wire in the rotor and the rotor wire in the stator terminal, this can cause problems. I will make the connections with the motor now. The brown wire is for the stator. The yellow and the gray wires are for the rotor. The red wire is for the stator. I have the stator wire pair in my hand. I will attach them with the stator terminals in the motor. I will count the six number terminal. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and 6. This is the six number stator terminal. Now you know what are the next connections, which are of the rotor. I will attach these rotor wires with the yellow and gray terminals on the motor. The connections of the rotor in the motor have been completed. The next connections are also with this motor. Speed is written in these control board terminals. These are the connections in the control board I will make with the motor. I have already made the pair for these speed wires and written speed on them using masking tape. I will attach both wires with any terminals of the speed in the control board. It will make no difference. The other end of the wires will be attached to the motor. At the back side of the motor, Teco is installed. This measures the speed of the motor and tells it to the control board. These white wires are of the Teco. I will attach the speed wires of the control board with the Teco wires in the motor connector terminal. Now I will make the next connections in the control board. Temperature is written here, I will make the connections here on the control board. These terminals are for the sensor attached to the heating element. I will attach both these wires to the temperature terminals in the control board. The other end of these wires will be attached to the sensor of the heating element. At the start of the video, I told you about the components used in the washing machine. I forgot to tell you about this component. This is a water inlet valve through which the washing machine takes water. I will install it now. The water inlet has two valves. The one is main valve and the other is the vice valve. I will have to check which is the main valve and which is the vice valve in it. I will tell you when I operate it. For now, I will make the connections with it. I have installed the black wire on the left valve. And the blue wire on the second valve. Both these connections are done, but it could not operate without line and neutral. I have given these valves line or neutral connection. These connections could be any of them. I will now attach a wire with these valves, which is called a common wire. I have connected two wires under one thimble. If I show the other ends of these wires. This is the first wire of the second end. This wire will be connected to the drain pump. This is the common wire I made. These wires will be attached to the water inlet valves. The wire I connected together will be attached here on the control board. The door is written on these terminals. It will be attached on the left side of any one terminal between the two, two number is written on these terminals. I will install the main and the vice valves terminal wires in the control board. JS1 and JS2 are written here. The JS1 is the main valve and the JS2 is the vice valve. The black wire is the main valve, which I am connecting. The blue wire is the vice valve. The next connections are for this drain pump. 
The one wire of the drain pump is already installed in the control board. I had made this green and yellow colored wire common with the blue wire. This wire will be attached to the drain pump at any one terminal. Now we need the second connection for the drain pump. PS is written on the control board. The second wire of the drain pump will be attached here. I have made a brown colored wire for it. I will install this wire on PS. The other end of the wire is attached to the drain pump's second terminal. I have to make the next connection with the door switch. You have to make the connections with the door switch very carefully. 1, 3 and 2 are written on the door switch. I have already made the wires for the door lock. I have written door 1, door 3, and door 2 on these wires. I will connect these wires to the terminals of the door lock carefully because if the connection on the door lock go wrong, the door switch or control board could go bad. The last terminal is 2 number, so I will attach the 2 number wire here. Then I will attach the 3 number wire. The last is the 1 number wire. The other ends of the door switch will be installed in the control board. The door is written on the control board. 1 and 2 are written on its terminals. I will attach the door wires here. I will separate the 1 and the 2 number wires. The 2 number wire will be joined with the 2 number terminal. The 1 number with the 1 number terminal of the door and the control board. I will say it again. Don't make mistake in the connections of this door lock. Door 3 wire will be attached to the AC line second terminal. After this, the connections I don't make will not make such an issue. Which are of heating. One is a line and the other is a neutral terminal. I will not attach the heating element to the control board because this heating element works with water. It could burn without water after heating up. That is why I will not install it. But if you still want to attach, just attach the wires with both these terminals from the control board heating terminals. At last, the connections I will make with the water flow switch. Let me show you the numbers written on it. 1, 3 on the right side and 4 number is written on the top. I have made wires for it with the same numbers mentioned on them. I have only written water on its wire in place of the water flow switch. The green wire is for the 4 number terminal. The 3 number wire is yellow and green. This brown is the 1 number wire. I will now make the connections in this control board. You can see water level is written on the control board terminals. I will attach the 3 number wire with the low water level. The 4 number wire which is green in color, I am connecting it with high water level. One wire is still remaining, which is the 1 number wire. One connector is empty with AC neutral. This 1 number connection will be installed here. I will attach the display of the circuit board. This is the connector of the display, which I am attaching. And I can say that all the connections have been completed. To test all the functions of the control board, Operating its flow switch is very important. So to do it I have this pipe and a syringe with me. I am inserting the pipe in the water flow switch. I will now pull the plunger of the syringe. I have filled the syringe with air. Pipe second end I have attached to the syringe. I will be able to test all the functions of the control board. I will power the system with electricity. I have turned on the display. I will select a program. I will set the smallest program, which is the wool program. After selecting the program I will press the start button. It is displaying an ED error, which means I didn't lock the door. I will lock the door switch. And see the drain pump has started to work after locking the interlock of the door switch. The drain pump works for 1 to 2 minutes. If the water is already present in the washing machine. It will drain the water first and then start the rest of the functions. Now the water inlet valve of the washing machine has turned on, which means the washing machine has started to fill the water. I will put air in the water flow switch to stop water from filling the washing machine drum and keep running the washing cycle. I am putting air slowly because if I does it quickly the control board will think that the water is already present in the washing machine. And will turn on the drain pump. I think the control board is on washing because it took water once and it will again start the system after draining the water. 
and this is how you can make the connection with the universal control board and test it. I will now install this whole system in the washing machine and tell you its final result. I have successfully installed the universal control board. Now I have this option that when the customer gets its original control board, I can install it in this washing machine. Now I have put the washing machine on the test. I have put laundry inside the washing machine. The machine has now started working in spin mode. Let's see how the washing machine performs in spin mode. Because the spin mode is very important as we get to know how the circuit is performing and whether is it trustworthy or not. The washing machine is placed a little unbalanced now, but it is performing well. When the drum was rotating slowly, it was moving a little. But at full speed, it has stopped moving which is a good thing. It has no such issue. Click on the left or right thumbnail to watch our next videos. And subscribe. Thank you.